Hello, this is Rick from MathX, and today we're going to be going over number 8 from the 1989 AIME. Now, this is another problem that isn't really relevant for today's AIMEs because this AIME took place over 30 years ago, but it's just a fun problem to solve. I first saw this problem while doing an AOPS book, and even though this problem looks quite tricky, there's actually quite an easy solution to it. When I first saw this problem, I thought we had to use matrices to solve it. But after thinking about it, we realized that we can actually solve this problem by using simple algebraic manipulations. And that the number of steps involved in solving this problem is not an obscene amount. In fact, a fifth grader or a sixth grader, if they just know the right algebraic manipulations, they could solve it themselves. This problem isn't that hard. So Without further ado, let's just get into the problem so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Assume that x1, x2, all the way through x7 are real numbers, such that x1 plus 4x2 plus 9x3 plus 16x4 plus 25x5 plus 36x6 plus 49x7 is equal to 1. 4x1 plus 9x2 plus 16x3 plus 25x4 plus 36x5 plus 49x6 plus 64x7 is equal to 12. And 9x1 plus 16x2 plus 25x3 plus 36x4 plus 49x5 plus 64x6 plus 81x7 is equal to 1, 2, 3. And from there, it wants us to find out the value of 16x1 plus 25x2 plus 36x3 plus 49x4 plus 64x5 plus 81x6 plus 100x7. So just by looking at the problem, we see several patterns. In the first equation, the coefficient of each of these x1, x2, x3 terms is just the square of the subscript. So the coefficient of x1 is just the square of 1. It's 1. The coefficient of x2 is the square of 2, 4. Coefficient of x3 is square of 3, 9. Similarly, the coefficient of x7 is just the subscript squared, 7 squared. 49x7. The same kind of thing happens with the second line, 4x1 plus 9x2, but instead of it just being the subscript square, it's the subscript plus 1 whole square. So 1 plus 1, 2 whole squared will give us the coefficient of x plus 1. 2 plus 1, 3 whole squared will give us the coefficient of x2. 3 plus 1, 4 whole squared will give us the coefficient of x3 all the way to 7 plus 1 whole square will give us 8 squared, or 64, as the coefficient of x7. The same idea applies with the final line of the problem, 9x1, 16x2. Instead of just adding 1 to the subscript, we add 2 to the subscript and then square. So x1 will become 1 plus 2 whole squared, which will give us 9. 2 plus 2 whole squared, which will give us 16. 3 plus 2 whole squared. 5 squared, 25, all the way to 7 plus 2 whole squared, 9 squared, 81. And in the problem, it just wants us to find out what 16x1, where instead of just adding 2 or adding 1, we add 3 to the subscript and then square. So 1 plus 3 whole square will give us 16. 2 plus 3 whole square will give us 25. 3 plus 3 whole square will give us 36, all the way to 7 plus 3, 10. 10 whole square will give us 100. So there's clearly some symmetry, and there's a weird pattern going on with this. There are consecutive squares that we can exploit in solving for the value of 16x1 plus 25x2 plus 36x3 plus 49x4 all the way to 100x7. So now to actually attack from the problem. First, we just analyze the properties, the squares, the coefficients. But in order to actually solve this problem, I'm just going to label each of these equations because I don't want to write it out every time. So this first equation will be written as 1. The second equation will be written as 2. And this third equation will be written as 3. And then the equation we want to find is going to be, be written as equation 4. So in order to get the value of equation 4, we have to add another equation 
to equation 3. If we subtract the coefficients of equation 4 and equation 3, we'll see that by doing so, the coefficients of the resulting x1s, x2s, and x3s will have a very interesting pattern. Now, I'm not going to write out all the x1, x2, x3, all the way to x7, because that's going to take a lot of time and it's really hard. But I'm just going to write out the coefficients so you can see the pattern. By doing 4 minus 3, we get 7x1 plus 9x2 plus 11 x3 plus 13 x4 and you kind of get the idea from here on all the way to 100 minus 81 19 x7 what we really have in this case is we have a series of consecutive odd numbers and that's just by subtracting our target equation from our third equation if we subtract 3 from 2, we see a similar pattern, except everything shifted over slightly. By subtracting equation 3 from 2, we see that the left-hand side's coefficients, 9 minus 4, will give us 5. 16 minus 9 will give us 7. 25 minus 16 will give us 9. And instead of maxing out at 19, this time I'll just max out at 17, with 81 minus 64. But we also have a value for this, because this side just represents the x1, x2, x3's coefficient. But by subtracting our actual values, we have that this is 123 minus 12, which is merely 111. So we see that if we want to find out the value of our fourth equation, our target equation, we just need to take the value of this third equation minus the second equation, 111. Add all of its coefficients to 2, x1, 2x2, 2x3, 2x4, all the way to 2x7. And then add that to the third equation. As in this case, it shows us that the difference between the fourth and the third equation is just this value. So if we add this value to it, we're just going to get the fourth equation. Now the question is, how are we going to get the series of 2x1, 2x2, 2x3, 2x4, all the way to 2x7. Let's just continue what we've been doing so far. We did 4 minus 3, equation 4 minus 3. Now we also did equation 3 minus equation 2. Now let's just try to end it off with equation 2 minus equation 1. First off, by subtracting these two equations from one another, we have a definite value. Equation 2 has a value of 12 and equation 1 has a value of 1. So Equation 2 minus equation 1 will give us 12 minus 1, which is just 11. As for the coefficients, we just need to do 4x1 minus 1x1, which will give us a coefficient of 3 for the x1 term, 9x2 minus 4x2, which will give us a coefficient of 5 for the x2 term, all the way to 64x7 minus 49x7, which will give us a coefficient for the x7 term. So 64 minus 49 will give us 15. Once again, we see a similar pattern. Just as how equation 4 minus equation 3 gave us coefficients which were consecutive odd numbers, but two greater than the set of consecutive odd numbers that we got when we subtracted equation 3 minus equation 2. Equation 3 minus equation 2 is just a series of odd numbers, two greater than the series of odd numbers when expressed with equation 2 minus equation 1. So then we see that if we just subtract the difference between equation 3 minus equation 2 and the difference between equation 2 minus equation 1, we're going to get 2x1 plus 2x2 plus 2x3 all the way to 2x7. And from there, we can add that to equation 3 minus equation 2 to get the value of equation 4 minus equation 3. Using this, we can just add this to equation 3 to get the pure value of equation 4, and thus we would have solved this problem. So from here, we just have to subtract the difference of equation 3 minus equation 2 and equation 2 minus equation 1. So 
numerically, our value would be 100. And as for the coefficients, we would get 2x1, 2x2, 2x3, all the way to 2x7. From here, if we add that to the difference of equation 3 minus equation 2, we would get 211 is equal to an expression with coefficients of 7, 9, all the way to 19. Because remember, we got the 2x1, 2x2, 2x3, all the way to 2x7, and we're just adding that to 5x1, 5, 7x2, all the way to 17x7. So that will obviously, just by adding it up, will give us 7x1, 9x2, all the way to 19x7. So we found the answer of this numerically by just exploring the two properties within each other. So now our final step to find out the value of equation 4 is to add this 7x1 plus 9x2 all the way to 19x7. We add this value to 9x1 plus 16x2 all the way to 81x7. And we see that the 9 plus the 7 will give us 16. The 16 plus the 9 will give us 25. And then the 81 plus the 19 will give us 100. So when it comes to the variable side, they're going to match up completely. In order to find out the numeric value, we just have to add up the value sides. So the value side of equation 3 is 1, 2, 3. The value side of this equation is 211. So adding the two up, we're going to get that the value of 16x1 plus 25x2 plus 36x3 plus 49x4 all the way to 100x7 is 4, 3, 3, 334. So 334 is our answer. So this problem wasn't too difficult. Even though it looks really complicated and involves some steps, most of this just could have been deduced by looking at the properties of square numbers, how square numbers will have differences of odd numbers. And by taking the differences of consecutive squares, we're going to get different sets of consecutive odd numbers. So in this problem, the key thing to do is to just keep all your work organized. On this, I had trouble writing out the x1s and the x2, but we still managed to keep it somewhat organized by defining the equations with numbers and then subtracting these numerical equations from one another. In this problem, you don't need to keep track of all the x1, x2, x3, x4, but you just have to keep track of the coefficients and make sure that the coefficients always stay corresponding with one another. Once you match the coefficients of this value and then have a value form for that, you pretty much solve the problem. So in these kinds of problems with tons of steps and tons of things to mess up on, don't get scared by the problems because AI me tries to scare you with problems that look scary, but in the end, they only do that because the problems themselves aren't too hard to solve. So with these kinds of problems, just keep your work organized and think about what you know about the numbers they give you. And more often than not, this will help you solve the problem.